Hello all. Today we're going to learn about a family owned global footwear and fashion accessory manufacturer and retailer Bata. Most of us have already have heard about this company. Let us know this company in a much better way. Bata, also known as Bata Shoe Organization, is a family owned global footwear and fashion accessory manufacturer and retailer with acting headquarters located in Lausanne, Switzerland. Organized in three business units, Bata Europe, based in Italy, Bata in Emerging Market, Asia, Pacific, Africa and Latin America, based in Singapore, and Bata Protective, worldwide B2B operations based in the Netherlands, the organization has a retail presence in over 70 countries and production facilities in 26 countries. The TNA Bata Shoe Company was founded in 1894 in Zlin, Moravia, then Austro-Hungarian Empire, today the Czech Republic, by Tomas Bata, his brother Antonin and his sister Anna, whose family had been cobblers for generations. The company employed 10 full-time employees with a fixed work schedule and a regular weekly wage, a rare find in its time. In the summer of 1895, Tomas found himself facing financial difficulties and debts abounded. To overcome these serious setbacks, Tomas decided to sew shoes from canvas instead of leather. This type of shoe became very popular and helped the company grow to 50 employees. Four years later, Bata installed its first steam-driven machines, beginning a period of rapid modernization. In 1904, Tomas Bata introduced mechanized production techniques that allowed the Bata Shoe Company to become one of the first mass producers of shoes in Europe. Its first mass product, the Batovki, was a leather and textile shoe for working people that was notable for its simplicity, style, lightweight and affordable price. Its success helped fuel the company's growth and by 1912 Bata was employing 600 full-time workers plus another several hundred who worked out of their homes in neighboring villages. In 1914, with the outbreak of World War I, the company had a significant development due to military orders. From 1914 to 1918, the number of Bata's employees increased 10 times. The company opened its own stores in Zlin, Prague, Libri, Vienna and Pilsen, among other towns. Consumer response to the price drop was dramatic. While most competitors were forced to close due to the crisis in demand between 1923 and 1925, Bata was expanding as demand for the inexpensive shoes grew rapidly. The Bata Shoe Company increased production and hired more workers. Zlin became a veritable factory town, a Bata will covering several acres. On the site were grouped tanneries, a brickyard, a chemical factory, a mechanical equipment plant and repair shop, workshops for the production of rubber, a paper pulp and cardboard factory for production of packaging, a fabric factory for lining for shoes and socks, a shoe shine factory, a power plant and a farming activities to cover both food and energy needs. Horizontal and vertical integration. Workers, buttermen and their families had at their disposal all the necessary everyday life services, housing, shops, schools, hospitals, etc. Bata also began to build towns and factories outside Czechoslovakia, Poland, Latvia, Romania, Switzerland, France and to diversify into such industries as tanning. 1915, the energy industry, 1917, agriculture, 1917, forest farming, 1918, newspaper publishing, 1918, brick manufacturing, 1918, Wood processing 1919, the rubber industry 1923, the construction industry 1924, railway and air transport 1924, book publishing 1926, the film industry 1927, food processing 1927, chemical production 1928, tire manufacturing 1930, insurance 1930, textile production 1931, motor transport 1930, sea transport 1932 and coal mining 1932. Airplane manufacturing 1934, synthetic fiber production 1935, and river transport 1938. In 1923, the company boasted 112 branches. In 1924, Thomas Bata displayed his business acumen by figuring, figuring out how much turnover he needed to make with his annual plan, weekly plans, and daily plans. Bata utilized four types of wages, fixed rate, individual order-based rate, 
collective task rate and profit contribution rate. He also set what became known as Bata prices, numbers ending with a 9 rather than with the whole number. His business skyrocketed. Soon Bata found himself the fourth richest person in Czechoslovakia. From 1926 to 1928, the business blossomed as productivity rose 75 percent and the number of employees increased by 35 percent. In 1927, production lines were installed and the company had its own hospital. By the end of 1928, the company's head factory was composed of 30 buildings. Then the entrepreneur created education organizations such as the Bata School of Work and introduced the five-day work week. In 1930, he established a stunning shoe museum that maps shoe production from the earliest times to the contemporary age throughout the world. By 1931, there were factories in Germany, England, the Netherlands, Poland and in other countries. In 1932, at the age of 56, Thomas Bata died in a plane crash during takeoff under bad weather conditions at Zlin Airport. Control of the company was passed to his half-brother Jan and his son Thomas John Bata, who would go on to lead the company for much of the 20th century, guided by their father's moral testament. The Bata Shoe Company was to be treated not as a source of private wealth, but as a public trust, a means of improving living standards within the community and providing customers with good value for their money. Promise was made to pursue the entrepreneurial, social and humanitarian ideals of their father. The Bata Company was apparently the first big enterprise to systematically utilize aircraft for company purposes, including rapid transport of lesser personnel on business like delivery of maintenance men and spares to a location where needed, originating the practice of business flying. At the time of Thomas's death, the Bata Company employed 16,560 people, maintained 1,645 shops and 25 enterprises. Jan Bata, following the plans laid down by Thomas Bata before his death, expanded the company more than six times its original size throughout Czechoslovakia and the world. Plants in Britain, the Netherlands, Yugoslavia, Brazil, Kenya, Canada and the United States followed in the decade. In India, Bata Nagar was settled near Calcutta and accounted from the late 1930s nearly 7,500 Bata men. The Bata model fitted anywhere, creating, for example, canteens for vegetarians in India and respecting the caste system. In exchange, the demands on workers were as strong as in Europe. Be courageous. The best in the world is not good enough for us. Loyalty gives us prosperity and happiness. Work is a moral necessity. As of 1934, the firm owned 300 stores in North America, 1,000 in Asia, more than 4,000 in Europe. In 1938, the group employed just over 65,000 people worldwide, including 36% outside Czechoslovakia, and had stakes in the tanning, agriculture, newspaper, publishing, railway and air transport, textile production, coal mining and aviation realms. Company policy initiated under Thomas Bata was to set up villages around the factories for the workers to supply schools and welfare. These villages include Bata Dorp in the Netherlands, Batovani, present day Partiz, Anske, and Svit in Slovakia, Batov, now Bahanak, part of Otrokovic in the Czech Republic, Borovo Bata, now Borovo Naselje, part of Yukovar in Croatia, then in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, Bata Park in Mohlin, Switzerland, Bataville in Lorraine, France, Batova in Canada, East Tilbury in Essex, England. Batapur in Pakistan and Batanagar and Bataganj in India. There were also a factory in Bellecamp, Maryland, USA northeast of Baltimore on US Route 40 in Harford County. The British Bataville in the East Tilbury inspired the documentary film Bat Bataville, We Are Not Afraid of the Future. Just before the German occup occupation of Czechoslovakia, Bata helped repost his Jewish employees to branches of his firm all over the world. Germany occupied the remaining parts of pre-war Czechoslovakia on 15th March 1939. Jan Antonin Bata then spent a short time in jail but was then able to leave the country with his family. Jan Antonin Bata stayed in the Americas from 1939 to 1940, but when America entered the war, he felt it would be safer for his co-workers and their families back in occupied Czechoslovakia if he left the United States. He was put on British and US blacklist. He tried to save as much as possible of the business, submitting to the plans of Germany as well as financially supporting the Czechoslovak government in exile led by the Edward Bernays. 
Thomas's son Thomas, manager of the buying department of the English Pata Company, was unable to return until after the war. He was sent to Canada by his uncle Jan to become the vice president of the Bata Import and Export Company of Canada, which was founded in a company town named Batawa, opened in 19, 1939. Foreign subsidiaries were separated from the mother company and ownership of plants in Bohemia and Boravia was transferred to another member of the family. In 1964, the Bata Shoe Organization moved their headquarters to Toronto, Canada, and in 1965 moved again in an ultra-modern building, the Bata International Centre. Uh, the building located on Winford Drive in suburban North York was designed by architect John B. Dot Parkin. After the Velvet Revolution in November 1989, Thomas J. Bata arrived as soon as December 1989. The Czechoslovak government offered him the opportunity to invest in the ailing government-owned Svet Shoe Company. Since companies nationalized before 1948 were not returned to the original owners, the state continued to own Svet and privatized it during voucher privatization in Czechoslovakia. Svet's failure to compete in the free market led to the decline and in 2000, Svet went bankrupt. After the global economic changes of the 1990s, the company closed a number of its manufacturing factories in developed countries and focused on expanding retail business. Bata moved out of Canada in several steps. In 2000, it closed its Batawa factory. In 2001, it closed its Bata retail stores, retaining its athletes world retail chain. In 2004, the Bata headquarters were moved to Lausanne, Switzerland, and leadership was transferred to Thomas G. Bata, grandson of Thomas Bata. The Bata headquarters building in Toronto was vacated and eventually demolished to much controversy. In 2007, the Athletes World chain was sold, ending Bata retail operations in Canada. As of 2013, Bata maintains the headquarters for its power brand of footwear in Toronto, the Bata Shoe Museum founded by Sonia Bata and operated by a charitable foundation in all is also located in Toronto. The 1968 Czech film All My Comp Compatriots by Voltech Jasny in a scene set in 1948 refers to Bata putting small shoemakers out of business. In Susan Eldrick's 2000 novel Sunset Over Chocolate Mountains, one of the three narrative voices is Eva, a worker in a Bata factory in Partizanske, Slovakia. Emil Zatopek worked in a Bata factory in Zlin, Bataville. We Are Not Afraid of the Future is a 2005 documentary produced and directed by the charming artistic duo Karen Guthrie and Nina Pope that documents a party of former UK Bata workers on a coach trip to the headquarters of the company at Zlin. So we got to know about the various aspects of Bata. We went through the company's history to its present day scenario.